Pull up. What's up, YouTube? It's me, Zilch again. Uh, back with some more X-Wing Alliance. And uh, I alluded to in my last video um, how to practice and get really good at dogfighting. Um, which we're going to do right here. Um, let's, uh... Basically, a lot of dogfighting in the X-Wing series is about being very accurate at longer ranges. The smaller thing you can hit, the farther away you can hit it, the faster you can shoot it, and the uh, higher angle off, like deflection angle, you can manage to hit a small starfighter zooming across your nose uh, with a very little exposure. The better you're going to be, the quicker you can work through the enemies, and uh, you know the, the more of an asset you're going to be to your team. Uh, to practice that skill, uh, what you can do is set up uh, satellites, buoys, um, you know, whatever, anything small. Um, mines are quite a threat, uh, so if you want to practice. Um, evasion while you shoot at small things like this, which isn't a bad idea. You can put these mines, you can uh, copy and paste them as I've done here a bunch of times. Let's paste, you know, mines. And, uh, you know, um, that's going to be a lot of freaking mines. And uh, I've loaded up the X-Wing. Uh, I do recommend even though one shot will, one laser shot will blow up any of these. I do recommend quad fire because uh, that increases your chances that one of those lasers are going to hit. And you're not going to be holding your nose on these things too much. You're going to be kind of swinging through and firing as your pipper is on the thing you want to kill. Alright, so let's, let's see what we can do here. It's been a while, folks. It's been a while. See how it kind of like, oh well, that's not a one-shot kill mine, that's like, eh, maybe it is, maybe it is, maybe I'm just sucking that bad. What I'm going to do is shut off laser convergence and see if that increases my chances of uh, smacking the target. I thought these were going to be mine fields, but they're really just single lines. I do have a problem with my joystick, see that jitter I'm getting as I'm getting close to the target? That's not me, that's, I hate to blame my hardware, but... Oh yeah, the reason that that music flourished is because uh, that was my primary target, that that uh, satellite. So that's the kind of what I'm thinking of. You swing your nose through and fire. It's not a really good example of good practice. Let's let's edit that a little bit. Let's craft per wave. How many can we fit? Six. Done. All right, so let's just copy that. Paste, 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 and this is gonna get a little. Uh, this is gonna get a little rough. And that's me flying X-wing Jinx. Oh, let's talk about some equipment here. You can load decoy beams, jamming beams, tractor beams. Um, I. If I load these, I tend not to use them. I just shut them off and channel all that energy into my engines, effectively giving me a faster ship. Warheads. Uh, concussion missiles, good against fighters. Um, they're small, they're faster, they're more agile, but they don't hit so hard. They're good for taking fighters out, for sure. Or small, tiny targets at six kilometers away. Uh, so they outrange your, your lasers. So uh, if you need to hit a mine that's really far away, do a mission objective or whatever, that's not a bad idea. Proton torpedoes, you know them, you love them. Heavy rockets, big, fat, slow, do major damage against capital ships. I do not recommend using these while locked on. If you're in, in if you're shooting these at something, they're gonna it's gonna be a big fat juicy target, like a platform or a capital ship. You don't need to lock on to those things. Just point them and shoot them. Uh, if you lock them, they're just gonna get shot down. Just dumb fire them. Same goes with the space bombs. So let's, uh, advanced missiles and pro advanced proton torpedoes are the same thing as you know, but they are faster, they are more agile, and they hit harder. Magpulse, what those do are amazing, even though they don't sound threatening. What they do is they shut the target's weapon systems down for several seconds. 
doesn't matter how big it is, it doesn't matter how much shield it has, those weapons are going down. So if you have a Star, star Destroyer, you hit it with a Mag Pulse, and space them out every 30 seconds, basically you've ki mission killed it for, you know, if you have eight of these eight times, you know, it's a four, four minutes. That's pretty significant. Uh, ion Pulse, those do what Ion Cannons do, they will disable a target without killing, without blowing it up, but the shields need to be down before that to work. And I don't know what the exact time is on the Mag Pulse. Is it 10 seconds? Is it 30? I don't know. If, if you're the one that got hit with them, it feels like an hour. Anyway, um, let's let's get cooking on this thing. Uh, done. That's a lot of freaking mines, and uh, since they're gonna be shooting at you the whole time, it's gonna be good practice on uh, like how to stay evasive while uh, while shooting your your bad guy. See how I didn't keep my tar uh, my uh, gun sight on that uh wow is that earth oh boy fan fiction um anyway with these all right so these are turbo lasers meaning they're turreted in this game not doing so hot but um see what happens if you point straight at it you're gonna get hit uh, for any length of time so don't point straight at it for longer than you have to to get your shot there you go that's a little better these guys far off Let's see if i can hit him from here This is the kind of practice I'm talking about. It's trying to hit that tiny little speck way far away at maximum range of your lasers. Um, that kind of thing uh, is really going to... Um, takes a lot of focus. You're like, oh, that tiny little gray speck way out there, like two kilometers. It's going to be a threat in a couple of seconds. So um, by the time that thing reaches 1.5 kilometers, the laser, you know, if it's on its way, so much the better. See, these targets are pretty good. They're not challenging here. Now, those ones over there... That's a little bit, a little bit more of a practice. I don't know if you're even going to be able to see these like dark gray and black mines against the dark gray and black background of space on YouTube. But, um, you can see the explosions, I hope. And I'm not following my own advice of staying evasive on firing. I'm just trying to run through it, counting my shields to uh, protect me, which is never sound in a single player campaign. You, they will just kill you. So this isn't horribly thrilling to watch, but it does give you an idea of like how how this can be valuable as practice if you want to get good. Something like this. See that tiny thing way out there? Oh, hit that one out there. Yeah. The faster you can line up that shot. Like I didn't do right there. Super fancy, you can blow up two targets in one shot because of the distance between the lasers. Anyway, I'm not going to belabor this. That, that gives you an idea. Um, so, yeah, mission failure. Oh no, right. So, but we got 58 mines in that short amount of time. Um, the idea for this came from back in the original X Wing games when there was an internet but no multiplayer. So people used to actually convene online and they would compete and have teams and stuff like that, build, build missions for each other. I used to do that, that was fun. Um, and one measure of online pilots, since you couldn't fly with each other, 
<laughs> was this thing called mine racing, where you'd take uh, one of the historical missions, I forget which, in the original X-Wing game, just a bunch of mines, and see how quickly you could do it. And squadrons would be like, hey, look, if you can't do complete mine racing in under, I don't know, 30 seconds or whatever, uh, don't bother applying. Um, so I started practicing that, and, uh, and I got pretty good at it. Used to be. Um, let's go with a new skirmish. And this is the other way to get good at the game. We are going to take our friendly neighborhood X-Wing. With uh, no warheads, and we are going to fight against a TIE Advanced. You also put an A-Wing. That's a, that's a good... Uh, that'll teach the principles uh, maybe even better. But um, it's just got a slimmer profile, a slimmer target. It's harder to hit, but uh, I hate shooting A-Wings because I just love them so much. So let's put TIE Fighter, I'll do it too. TIE Interceptor will work, but the Avenger is even faster. It hits harder. It'll punish your mistakes harder. We're going to put it, up, crank it up to top base. We're not going to put warheads or any of that garbage on there because we're just focusing on uh, lasers. And um, watch how this thing flies. We're going to two kilometers. gonna make it a melee so it's just a timer or however you want to do this set it to five minutes or whatever you, however much time you, you feel is justified and um, see how many of these things you can splash in five minutes set it two kilometers that way you can engage really quickly once it jumps out of hyperspace Trying to hit it as it comes out of hyperspace is also a good idea. All right. Um, so he's coming in here. That is what a top ace AI will do to you if you don't if you don't evade correctly. See how my shields are at nil right now? He did that to me. So I'm using my laser energy to charge the shields up. You notice my shield uh, recharger is at zero. I got him now. He's dead to rights. But um. I just, uh, X-Wing has four lasers, which are really good at recharging the shields in the turn, though. So, um, because you have four batteries, um, one for each laser gun, you can, uh, quickly, uh, so you can fly parallel to them, it's usually a better way to Yeah, see, that's no good. Um, and that doesn't make me happy. Ego damaged, higher than ship. You know, the best way to uh, prevent that is to get your guns on him first and start scoring hits. So he'll go evasive, and then he won't... He won't uh... See how he's flying now? Um, he's kind of evasive. He'll, he'll come in and make a shot at you, but generally he's kind of squirrely, like he's trying to line up a shot now. Boom. The instant you hit him, he's going to break off and do something else. Bad shape here. So, uh, if I can hit him. Yeah. That's more like it. See how we broke off? Now we're unscathed and we can engage correctly. He's gonna re engage too. These uh, top ace um, AI. They're predictable. They only do certain things, but they also do those things really well. They are accurate. As you just saw, like, once I was in uh, weapons range for him, he uh, he shredded my shields pretty quick. Tie advanced, no joke. So he's coming out of the hyperspace. Basically, he's in a hyperspace exit animation now. And I'm cheesing it up. You can knock his shields down. You can hit his, hit his hull. You can't kill him. He'll knock him down to, like, 1%. Oh, man. Okay, we did hit him. You can see I'm a little rusty, but this is exactly the kind of thing you need to do if you are. Find something you just barely can't do, and... Yeah. That was a gamble. It's like, go evasive, or bear down, and uh, try and... You know, you're basically a plain chicken. Uh, which I lost. 
but now he's toast. problem. What's it doing? Bad shot. Bad aim. Uh, it's kind of an interesting comparison because the X-Wing, I'm not going to be able to catch him. As you can see, he, if he wants to extend and get away, he's going to do it. He's way faster than me. Um, in the head-on fight, I think our shields are about even, our hulls are about even, but he's way faster. That's the kind of shot you need to practice making. Figure out, hit him right before he's able to get his lasers uh, to bear on you. If you can hit that, you'll either kill him or he'll go evasive. Either way, he's not going to carve you up like this guy's probably about to do to me. Let's see what we do. Okay. Okay. Well, I hit him and I killed him, but he destroyed my flight control system. Which will be repaired in about four seconds. Oh boy. This is... He's going to come in. <laughs> it was locked into a straight line. Oh man, I don't, I don't get the pan back. I would have killed you if the, they hadn't held me back. So we got a 7 to 4 KDR. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I'm used to getting a lot higher than that. But uh, you get the idea. This is probably... I'm going to practice this without the world looking at it on YouTube. Uh, see if I can get this more like 10 to 0 like I used to get. Um, or even higher. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the general idea. Uh, the top base AI uh, is very accurate. Um, that said, they're very predictable. If you can get the first strike on them, they will break and evade and go somewhere else. As you may guess, if there's more than one of them, and if you can't kill them with your first shot, I recommend going the other way. Uh, you're going to have to engage them. But you want to engage them on your own terms. You want to get in there and mix it up rather than like a straight on head on jousting match where you just, you know, clobbering each other with lasers. Uh, I mean, you have an advantage usually flying a rebel ship with thicker shields, but they have numbers. That's what the Imperials do. They'll have you outnumbered six to one or more, and uh, you can't dodge everything. So uh, you got to have some situational awareness. Use your sensors, they're pretty good. Um, you know, use that to figure out whether it's a good idea to attack or not, or to, to go the other way, or fly perpendicular at a high speed while evading. Sometimes that's enough to get you in, you know, in your preferred range or whatever uh, to get some good shots in. But you have to read it and, uh, you know, not only read the play and figure out whether it's good to engage or not, but have the skill to actually pull off the shot and make the kill. Or kills, actually. Lots and lots and lots of kills, which in this game, you, you by the time you finish the campaign, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of TIE Fighter and TIE Interceptor kills with a bunch of bombers, gunboats, some TIE Advanced Defenders, uh, probably a few capital ships, um, you know. Um, so that's, uh, that's a lot of fun. Here, let's uh, maybe just to show you how quickly and how badly this can go down. TIE Interceptors, they also have the same armament for uh, laser cannon. Put six of these guys at top ace level. Watch what happens. This is actually going to be some really good practice. Oh boy. Now actually I prefer it's better. See what I mean? Um, I might have been able to get one of them if I was on, on my game, which I wasn't. Which, uh, you know, that's how it's going to go. Yeah. So, let's not, let's not mess around with that. <laughs> now, crank the range out. Where's the setting for that? Right. Watch what happens. 
that's where uh, having control of your AI wingmen actually helps a lot. You can have them uh, go in there with you, and they'll 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 split their fire between two or three of you instead of just one. I'm gonna start firing now. I'm gonna crack him. This guy might die, but you see where that goes. If you can, um, depending on their AI setting, one of the big differences between like a top ace was just a big difference between like a top ace AI pilot and the ace, the veteran, or even the ace or any of that is not only their accuracy but the rage at which they engage. Right. So um, if you crank this down to veteran. Which is what I think a lot of the, uh, depending on the difficulty level you've set. Um, bring it down to veteran or ace, watch what happens. There, that's going to be a good shot. You start firing before you hit 1.5 because by the time you're... I was able to get two. You can see if I had been a little more on my ball. <laughs> on, <laughs> on the ball, excuse me. Um, if I was a little more with it. Um, I could have probably shot three of them down, you know, four maybe, before they got in range. All right. And when you're in mixing it up with them, if you're twisting, you're turning, you're chopping your throttle, you're rolling, you're aiming and all that stuff, you're a lot safer. Uh, nothing is absolute. There's only probabilities. Like, are they less likely to hit you? Yeah, sure. Is there a guarantee they won't? No. And see what I mean about accuracy being critical to winning these fights. Because if you, if I could kill this guy now, well, if I hit that shot, I could move on to the next guy and just, you know, work him through. That shot I should have hit. There, that's better. And we got a new flight coming in. good pretty quick uh, despite the blows to your ego um see seven to two that's going to go quite a bit better and ace is kind of like in between there i think these guys engage at what half a click the ace is at one kilometer and i think the top ace is 1.5 if i remember correctly anything below veteran ai they're just stupid um they, they won't uh they won't do much of a threat to you and not really good practice, and they should, you're just going for gunnery and, you know, familiarization and whatnot. Anyway, that's some tips that might help you um, improve as, as a player. And if you're worried about your stats, because the game does keep track of these, just create a new pilot file, call it trainer or whatever you want to do, and just goof around with that one and, you know, uh, get good yourself. And then when you fly your actual pilot file, it'll, it'll log your stats the way you want them to. So that's it. Um... Thanks for watching. Uh, that was actually a little, uh, little helpful. And uh, I'll catch you guys later. Good hunting.